Hello, I'm Zach Kasparik, and I'm a power engineer in research and development. Today, I'd like to introduce you to the new SEL Axion Bay Controller. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create custom screens for the Bay Controller and show how to use its touchscreen interface. This new Bay Control solution combines the scalable architecture of the SEL 2240 Axion with a 7 inch color touchscreen display and the powerful logic engine of the SEL real time automation controller. The Axion backplane I'm using today includes an SEL 2241 RTAC, a power coupler, and various input and output modules commonly used in bay control applications. The first thing we'll go over is how to create custom screens using Accelerator RTAC in the integrated bay screen builder software. This will require an RTAC slash Axion project type with R149 firmware version or later. The first step we need to perform is insert an SEL touchscreen device into our project. To do this, select the Insert tab, SEL Axion, and then the SEL touchscreen. Press the Insert button to add this to your device. The SEL touchscreen device comes pre-configured with many custom screens that are intended to provide you a starting point for your application. If you see a screen that you would like to make modifications to, simply click the edit button, which will open up these custom screens in Base Screen Builder software. For this example, I'm going to show creating new screens from scratch. To do this, in the Bay Control tab, I press the New button. Pressing the New button opens up our Base Screen Builder software, where I have the ability to rename the project or update the symbol type. For this example, I will leave these as default. Our project screens window contains all screens that will be displayed in the Axion Bay Controller project. Here I have a new screen, which I want to rename to demo screen. To rename, right click and hit the rename button. Once you've renamed your screen, hit the update screen button. The Axion Bay Controller supports up to 25 custom screens and you can add these screens through this plus button in the project screens window. The symbols window contains all symbols that can be added to the Axion Bay Controller's custom screens. To add a symbol, simply click, drag, and drop that symbol onto the screen. Here I've added a breaker, a disconnect switch, an analog label, a digital label, and an operation button. You can update the properties of each of these symbols using the properties window on the right hand side of Base Screen Builder. Once you're satisfied with your screen design, press the publish package button, which sends these screen updates to Accelerator RTAC software. In Accelerator RTAC, we can now see our demo screen with those elements we just added. From here, we could begin configuring our RTAC project settings. Now that we finished that step, Let's take a look at how we can interact with the Axion's touchscreen interface. For this demonstration, I will be using a pre-built project that highlights some of the major features of the touchscreen display. Starting at our home screen, we have the ability to navigate by tapping an application or a folder. I'm going to tap our reports folder, which navigates me to the reports folder where I can see our SOE application. You can use the back arrow or the home button to return to the home screen. This project has push button one previously configured to navigate me to a custom screen within the custom screens application. Pressing push button one, we can see it navigates me to the comprehensive elements screen. This screen contains disconnect switches, a breaker, digital information, operation buttons, navigation buttons, and analog information. We can see switch one is in the open state and I'm gonna close that switch. Tapping on the switch, I'm prompted to log in using my RTAC username and password. Tapping the username field, I can enter my username. And then tapping the password field, I can now enter my RTAC password. Pressing the login button, now the RTAC validates my username and password and ensures I have the proper permission to perform this disconnect switch operation. Now we can see switch one is in the open state and I want to close that disconnect switch. I'm gonna press the close button. 
Where I'm prompted, close confirmation. Switch one, are you sure? And I'm gonna say yes. There we could see our switch one transition from the open to the in progress and then to the closed state. Let's repeat this with switch two. Now that both our disconnect switches are closed, let's look at closing our breaker. Our breaker is in the open state, so tapping on the breaker, I can see that we are in the open state. Pressing the close button, I'm prompted again, close confirmation, breaker, are you sure? And I'm gonna say yes. We have two digital labels mapped to push button five and push button six. Right now we can see they are in a deasserted state. Pressing push button five, we can see the screen reflects that push button five is asserted. Let's repeat that with push button six. Releasing those buttons, we see the, the digital label change from asserted to deasserted. Next, I want to show our operation buttons. We have two operation buttons, one for asserting all the green LEDs and the other for asserting the red LEDs. The Axiom Bay controller has tri-colored LEDs which support red, green, and amber. They are currently in the amber state. Pressing the green LEDs operation button, we can see assert green LEDs, are you sure? I'm going to say yes. And there we saw our tri-colored LEDs update to green. Now I'm gonna assert the red LEDs. Next, our analog information in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen reflects two analog labels one for VA and the other for frequency. These can be mapped to any analog quantities in the RTAC logic engine. Next, our navigation buttons allow another method for navigating quickly to other screens in the Axion Bait controller. Here, I'm gonna demonstrate navigating to our SOE screen by pressing the SOE button. Here, I'm prompted to navigate to the SOE screen. Are you sure? and I'll say yes. The SOE screen has been configured to only contain logs that are relevant to the Axion Bay control. Here we can see our switch one transition to close, switch two transition from open to close, and our breaker one transition from open to close. You can navigate to previous logs using the up and down arrows on the SOE application. That brings us to the end of this video, highlighting just a few of the exciting features of the new Axiom Bay controller. Thank you for watching.